and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. This is video one of a four part series to show you how to make the Snow Day Crochet Mittens. These mittens are great for ages two through eight and is a really simple pattern. Great for beginners trying their hand and making a new accessory for the loved ones in their life. This is a free pattern available from redheart.com. I've put a link to the pattern in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say to let people know you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned, this is video one of a four part series. So once you complete today's video, which is the cuff, and you've completed that homework, you can move on to video two. Now go ahead, grab the pattern, your hook and yarn, and let's jump in. For the cuff of the mittens, we are going to use a combination of single crochet and slip stitches to create this really cool fabric. This looks like actual knitted fabric, doesn't it? Looks like a knitted rib. We have these really cool knit type stitches and then there is sort of like a gutter or valley which would normally be purl stitches, but that's where our single crochets are going to be created. Just a little note, as you're following along with the pattern, you'll notice that for each size, there is a different set of number instructions for the number of stitches you need to work or the number of rows you need to work. The smallest size is outside of the parentheses, and then you have the two larger sizes within the parentheses. Last but not least, don't forget you're making two cuffs because you're making two mittens, at least for most of us. For this pattern, you need a worsted weight yarn and a size H or five millimeter crochet hook. We begin with a slip knot directly on our hook. Once you get the slip knot on your hook, you want to chain 11 and that's for all of the sizes. Once you have 11 chains, you will skip the first chain and go into the second chain from hook and you will single crochet. This part is not written in the instructions, but especially for those of you who are beginners, I want you to use stitch markers at the beginning and the end of your row to help you know where those stitches are. I think it's very important. What I mean is, at the start of the row, after you complete that first single crochet, grab a removable stitch marker and place it into the stitch you just completed. See how it looks like a V-stitch behind your hook? Place your marker right there. Now we'll go ahead, go to the next chain, and work another single crochet. We'll do this all the way down the row, and at the end, we'll have a total of 10 single crochets. Once you complete your final single crochet, you've completed the first row. This is the right side of your fabric. That will be apparent as you're going along, but it's something to make note of right now. Typically, when you work to the next row, you chain a number of stitches and then turn. For this particular stitch pattern, you do not chain. We will simply turn our work for this row. On row two, we are going to work slip stitches into each single crochet all the way down. And when we work these slip stitches, we are going to go into both loops of that single crochet. So I have just turned my work, take my hook, go into that first single crochet, Yarn over, pull up a loop, and this is very important. Make sure your hook is parallel to your actual single crochets you just completed. What that does is it pulls up this loop you just pulled up, and it makes it the same height as the loop that's on your hook. What this will do is when we pull that new loop through the loop on our hook, we will not be making those slip stitches really tight, making it almost impossible for us to work into them. We want to keep them nice and loose and consistent. So by pulling our hook up in that manner, we will be doing so. We're also going to add another stitch marker to the stitch we just completed. So that slip stitch we just made, I want you to take another stitch marker and place it into that stitch you just completed, that slip stitch. Okay, this one's very important. If you don't do this one over here, please do this one over here. It will help you out so much. Now we'll go to the next single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, make sure your hook is parallel, and then pull that loop through. 
Do not, I repeat, do not give yourself an extra pull. Once you pull that through, don't give it a pull like that. Don't do it because you need some slack there, okay? You want to keep that stitch nice and loose. Go into the next, yarn over, pull up, make sure it's parallel, and pull through. You will thank me if you do it in this manner. It'll make it so that these slip stitches are not absolutely impossible to get into. So make sure you're doing this all the time, okay? We work these slip stitches all the way down the row. You will know you're at the end of the row when you reach that first stitch marker. That's what it's there for. It's there to let you know that that's the last stitch of your row. It's very important. Once you pull that through, at this end, before we go to the next row, we will do a chain one. So we chain one and turn. You could also turn and chain one, it doesn't matter. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You can see we have a nice series of what look like V stitches right here from where we created the slip stitches that are showing up on the opposite side. We do not want to interrupt these stitches over here. We want to make sure we're working our single crochets into all of those V stitches on that side. Can you see how it looks like there's a row of V stitches there and then a row of V stitches right here? See how these ones look like they're kind of like heart shapes going this way? And these ones look like, <laughs> if I can make it not turn, heart shapes going this way. We wanna make sure we go into these ones. So here's how I do it. We chained one. Here's the first stitch on this side, okay, that we don't wanna go into. So if I pierce sort of right behind it in the middle, okay, see how it looks like I'm in the middle, and I go down, I'm actually putting both of those loops directly onto my hook. You see that? That's the slip stitch I want to work into. So I'm into both of those legs of the slip stitch and I complete a single crochet. Once you complete that single, make sure you move up your marker. And I will also remind you to not accidentally make these single crochets too tight. Go to the next one. Here's the one I don't want to work into. Here's the one I want to work into. So. If I make sure I pierce the center and go down, see how I get both of those legs on the hook? Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, draw through two. It gets easier as you start working along. The biggest thing is make sure that you're getting both legs of that slip stitch, okay? You don't wanna just get one, you wanna get both. And you wanna make sure you're not interrupting those really nice, that really nice row of V's in the front. As you get closer to the end, this is where you will notice it's very important that we had that marker there. If this marker wasn't here, it'd be very difficult to know where that slip stitch is, okay? But I marked that slip stitch so I know exactly where it is. So I can take my hook, go exactly through that slip stitch, you see that? And complete my single crochet. If I didn't have that marker there, it makes it really difficult to find. Now, at this end, remember, when I'm getting ready to turn and work slip stitches back, I do not chain one. I simply just turn. I will go into this first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, make sure I make it parallel, then pull it through the loop on my hook. Move my marker up, so that way I can find that slip stitch when I come back down there, and then carry on. As you're working along, don't get overconfident and think that you don't need to make this look hook parallel to make the stitches nice and loose. If those stitches become really tight, you will regret it because not only will it be difficult to get the stitch into it, but your work will begin to uh, take a different shape as well. When you're at the end of this row, remember it is when we transition from the slip stitch row to the single crochet row that we start off with a chain one and we turn our work. On this row, remember you want to not interrupt any of that column of V stitches. We want to put all of those slip stitches right back there. Those are the ones we're working through. So I go through and I work my single crochet all the way down the row. And remember that stitch marker at my other end 
is there to help me find where that last slip stitch is, okay? You continue on repeating these two rows a total of eight, 10, or 11 times, depending on the size you're making. Once you've reached the number of times for the size you're making, you will then have to join this so that way it becomes a cuff. I have reached my 11 times here, and so what I want to do is I want to make my piece folded in half. So the right sides, the sides that have the V's are facing each other, I'm going to fold those in half. And working through both sets of fabric, okay, both sets of fabric right here, I'm going to work slip stitches all the way down. So I will go ahead and work through this first. And then this is the loop right back here. That's the loop that I had remaining from my first uh, chain row. And I'm just going to pull a loop through and then through. Go through this one and that one and just do slip stitches. Again, I wanna make sure they're not super tight. So make sure that you are keeping coming up parallel so it's not really tight, okay? You should see where the stitch you're working into from the single crochet side will match up perfectly to that free loop remaining from your foundation chain that you did. And I'm just working slip stitches all the way up. I don't think I got both loops there. There we go. Make sure you grab both of them. It will be noticeable if you don't. And it's my last one. Come up. Once you've completed all of the slip stitches to join the cuff in the rounds, we want to go ahead and make it so the cuff is right side out. This is what it looks like on the wrong side once it's all joined. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my hook so that way I can easily do this. And you want to make sure that you're not going to accidentally turn this with your yarn on the inside. So what you need to do is hold your cuff right here. Make sure you don't lose that loop there, okay? So pull it out more if you need to. And just tuck this part of the cuff on the inside. Can you see that? So now my yarn is still out here ready for me to use. I still have my loop ready to go, but the right side of my cuff is now facing me, ready to go on to the next part. Go ahead and complete two cuffs. Join me in video two, where we will make the palm of the mitten and prep for the thumb holes. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.